uh, another verse in the Bible which tells us to stand in awe. This is number two. I don't know if they'll be if I can make it to number three, but hey, uh, y'all know me. I sometimes get a little long-winded, but uh, we're going to stick with what today and and in dealing with the word all and what it truly means. Last week I told you that wall that, that all that was used uh, in chapter four of Psalms, verse four, it was to stand in all and to sin not and commune in thy heart upon, thy, uh, upon your bed. And that was David basically seeing the sin in his life and how disgusted he was when God used Nathan the prophet and shared that with him, right? When sin, sin's not sin until somebody points it out to us, right? When God himself sends uh, a messenger to say, hey, buddy, you're wrong. You're against God. And then what happens? You kind of get, oh, you get appalled and disgusted with yourself because you've been caught. See, before you got caught, you wasn't worried about it. It wasn't sin until you got caught, until you were held up against the letter of the law. And so many times we live in that, and we let it ease back in, right? Because we're not in awe. We're no longer angry with sin. We don't have this do not enter sign for sin or caution sign for sin we just kind of haphazard laugh around it and and it becomes everyday life until it gets out of hand until it gets overboard and so last week we see that uh, there was a few things we didn't get through them all so I, i'm just gonna uh, just kind of briefly their spot the first thing we had to do was realize uh, the sin and what it was and how it separated us from god secondly they had to david had to repent of his sin right that's our number one goal is when we know that we're in sin, accept the fact that we're sinners, accept the fact that there's a payment for sin, which is death. there's a wage that was already paid through, look, through our repentance, Christ made the way. God loved us so much that he made a way for us that we could get back in the fellowship, right? And so therefore, we've recognized how to rebuild the relationship with God. And so by doing that, what it does is lead us back to the beginning point is, hey, we need to hate sin as God hates sin. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That's what the Word says. Now, either the Word's true or it's not. And it is true. We know it's true. I said, let God be true and every man a liar. So therefore, we hold to that. And it said, <clears throat> sin ought to disgust us and give us that upset feeling in our stomach as a child of God. It should never get comfortable, right? But it does. It does. You know why? Because we're out in this world more than we're in this Word. And that's, just the, that's the nature of the beast. Whichever one you feed the most, the stronger will be. But it shouldn't be. You know why? Because as a saved, born-again child of God, God has given you His Spirit to live within you. He knew you can't, or we can't do it on our own. There is not a day goes by that sin doesn't cross our way, but Stephen, and that old sucker on the side starts tapping you and whispering in your ear. And it takes, look, it could be your spouse. It could be your child just to stir the pot just a little hair, yeah. right? And the next thing you know, you're falling in. You've done, fell off the wagon. You've done slipped into saying something you shouldn't say. And the next thing you know, you've cost your fellowship. Because God didn't leave. You left him. Yes, Amen. But if we have that hatred for sin and that disgust for sin, then we ought to recognize that sin when it's there and move away from it. We need to, things we can do is watch and to listen to see if God lines, if it lines up with God's word. If it lines up with God's word, now you're in good standing. That's your guideline. That's your plummet. That's your plumb bob. If it's giving God glory or not. Sin doesn't give God glory. No. It wants to rob, steal, and destroy. Yes, Amen. That's the devil's job. If it's temporary or eternal. That's easy. Is this going to be right now, happy, fix it, make me feel good right now, or is it setting up my treasures in heaven for an eternal? <clears throat> Yeah. Anyway, First, First Corinthians fifteen thirty four says, "Awake to the righteous and sin not." And some that have a knowledge of God, I speak this as your shame. 
Lastly, you have the responsibility to turn from sin, to realize, repent, and rebuild relationships. This week, we are diving in to Psalm 33. And if, if going through the Bible, you start to pick up, and I don't know if I told you Psalms 33, landing spot, but it's the next place where we find all in the Bible, spots, and it's <clears throat> all three are in Psalms 1 and 4, 4, 1 and 33, and 8, and the others in 119, and what we're going to do is hit on 33 tonight, and there's a different meaning for the word all tonight. The, the word meaning tonight is that fear, that reverence. As a matter of fact, we'll read the text and, and, and see what God's trying to tell us. If you've got your Bibles open to Psalms 33, we'll, we'll start in, uh, let's just start right there in, in verse 1. And we'll read down and, uh, to verse 8 and we'll just pause for a minute. Does that be all right? All right, let's, let's read. Psalms 33, verse 1. The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, and praise is comely. For the upright, it says, Praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with the psalteries and the instruments of ten strings. <clears throat> sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right unto all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of his goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them that... Uh, of them by breath of his mouth. Yeah. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as a heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Father God in heaven, Lord, I just thank you for this word, Lord. It is so powerful and it is life changing and moving, Lord God, and it's Sharper, we know, than any two-edged sword, dividing, Lord God. But, Father, more than that, Lord, it's living. More than that, Lord God, it's powerful. It's life-changing, Lord God. And I thank you for the day that your word became real in my life. I thank you for the day, Lord, that you called me, Lord God, uh, from a sinner's hell, Lord God, through your word, showing me that I was lost, that I was a sinner. I pray, Lord God, that I can keep the first all that I had for you, Lord, and realize that every day is a gift and that every day, Lord God, has been given by you and that my spirit only uh, is here by your will, Lord God. We love you. We praise you, Father. And I just ask you, Lord, in this time, Lord God, to just reveal the all to all of us, Lord God. Help us renew the all in our heart. Help us to follow you, Lord God. And fear you, Lord God, with a reverence, Lord, that cannot be matched. Father, we love you. You are an awesome God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your son, your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Tonight we look at the, the word all here. If we look at verse 8, <clears throat> it says, Let all the earth fear the Lord. So he set up that first principle of fearing the Lord. That is a, to reverence, to have a reverential fear. He is our final judge. If you've ever been before, at the courthouse on the wrong side, there was a reverential fear because your life had, was held in someone else's hand. Well, there is a judgment that we'll stand before, right? And we are judged by the most powerful thing on this earth, and that is God's Word. It's right, it's truth. It's unwavering. It's not going to change. Why? Because he knows it. He doesn't change. Right? Look at verse... <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at mama's face. She's rolling. She can already hear. For the, look at number verse number four. For the word of the Lord is what? Right. And all his works are done in truth. Why is that? Because he's God. He's perfect. We look all the way in the beginning of the Bible and we see that <clears throat> why we should stand in awe. David goes back and tells us, listen, we need to stand in awe for who God is. Yes, sir. He's not the old man upstairs. Right. We like to give him little words, old grandfather time. Some of us use mother nature. I mean, not most, most of the church doesn't, but you know what I'm, y'all been in small talk at wards. 
Y'all know what it's like. He's got a nickname. No, he's God. He's all powerful. He's ever existing. Look there. What? Look, he is it. He said, I am. I am. Present, future, past tense. He is it. He is him. He is he. Right? The, uh, the Alpha and the Omega. He said, to, to fear the Lord. Who is the Lord? He is uh, Jehovah. He is the pre existent, the before, <coughs> He is self existent one, the Lord God. There is only one that can hold the title of awesome, and He is it. Amen. Nothing else. In the beginning, what? God, Jehovah. The pre, look, existing one. And then we go on through Genesis and you, and you just read just a few more verses more and you get into the, the creative work of God. And this is where David is steering us. David's saying, listen, like all of us, we get in our minds so busy. I want you just for a second, think about David's life for a minute. Shepherd boy, little ruddy fella. Probably, I, I always pictured him, Brother Brad, as a little prissy looking guy because the Bible says he's pretty. If you look at ruddy, that's what you see. When you look that word up, it's pretty. He's, you know. But, but listen, he goes through what? He slays a lion and a bear. He goes through later on. God brings him through, and all his manly brothers are there, and nobody's standing up. The king of Israel standing will not go out to fight this Philistine. And what does he do but go out there and pick up five smooth stones, picks out the right one, slings it, hits the giant, defeats the enemy, cuts his head off with his own sword, and then look, now where's he at? Man, he has captivated all of Israel. Now he's going through, and he is taking names, taking charge. What happens? He's gotten busy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. He went from playing the harp to soothe the king mm -hmm. to cutting off heads of enemies, going out and proving to his king that he was worthy and he had one God that was going to do the fighting for him. Right. He goes out and comes back. Now he's sitting, we're going to fast forward a little bit, with all of his might is sitting up in the housetop. And a little bit of sin, Brother Stephen, just slipped on in. And it just took his eye a second. Yeah. And it actually didn't start with the eye. It took with this, it was slothfulness. Right. right? Because he should have been out there in the time of kings warring. But he, he, he decided he was going to step back and ease up a little. Uh -oh. You know, that's what happens in our Christian life when we ease up a little bit. And we forget the awe of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. It's he that saved us and brought us out of a devil's hell and placed us where we are to be ministers of the gospel, and yet somehow we feel like we get to a point where the luster. You ever been in the place and time where the luster of church and God and everything gets a little bit mundane? Dull, yeah, dull, yeah I mean, that's a good word, dull. Uh -huh. And it's almost like a dull axe if you try to chop wood, Michael. You're just beating it to death. In half time, you're working yourself more than you work in that axe head. Right. So what happens, like anything, you're going to try a different avenue. David got to a point in his life where he stepped back. He wasn't thriving as he once was because he had arrived. Right. Yeah. No, no. When we lose the luster and the all of God, we'll fall deep into sin. Because if we're not occupied trying to praise and worship and give him all the glory, we'll start trying to grab a little for ourselves. And before you know it, we're caught up in sin. Before you know it, we've broke fellowship with God. Before you know it, we've stopped singing praise and glory and hallelujahs to God. And we're singing, oh, woe is me. Where has my Lord departed to? David right now, though, is in a place in his time. If you look, if you like to read the Bible, I always go before and after to see where we're at before because the first word in 33 is rejoice. That doesn't sound like a man who's gotten caught. It doesn't sound like a man who's just lost his son, who's, who's been beat down, who the Lord has just convicted of his own sin. It sounds to me like this man has something to just shout hallelujah about. 
And why is that? If you look at 32, it says, Blessed and whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Listen, David has repented. Remember verse 4, or chapter 4, 4, when he talked about the hatred of sin, that was David laying it out there. He had brought it out, laid all this sin out. Why can, why can he lay it out? Because God already knows our sin. We can't keep... No, you know, the, the, there's a group out there that they like to say, I, I will come out the closet. Sin is not in a closet. It ain't in a booth, a suitcase. It ain't in a pill bottle. God knows everything you do. Right. We can't keep it from him. Right. And the minute we try to is the minute we say, I know more than God. Uh -oh. Huh? And that's the sin. That's the sin that catches us. Breaks fellowship. So David goes on to through this. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteousness, and praise calmly. That word calmly right there means two things. To praise calmly, calmly meaning suitable. To the, so, so if we use that word, how does it look? For praise is suitable for the upright. If you've been born again and bought by the blood of Jesus, yes, sir. right? Yes, sir. And you've fallen down and you've gotten picked back up and you've realized where you failed and, you, and you, you can't do it on your own because you'll stay there and you'll mutter around, right? And so the Lord comes by your way and he shares the power of his word through a preacher, through a man of God, one of you men, well, ladies of God, and he shares that word of encouragement. And the light goes off. Your sin's been revealed. And the next thing you know is you're remembering how God, God, how did you find me here? It's the power of God, the awesomeness of God. He knows all, sees all. He is the all-powerful, omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. He knows your thoughts. He's got this thing under control. You didn't take him by surprise and neither did I. That all there, it says secondary in the calmly. <clears throat> Let me just give you that. The calmly is suitable. Not only is it it's suitable, but it's beautiful. Right. When we can come to the Lord in our righteousness and give Him the rejoice and praise Him for who He is, right. nothing more. It doesn't matter if you can do anything. You can praise Him. God has given all of us a gift. And only you know what it is. God's already put it in you from the day you was born. As you become into, into the children or family of God and you start getting under that powerful word, He reveals it to you. He's going to put a little unction in you. And that desire to do what He's created you to do will come out. But until then, praise Him. Rejoice in the Lord for who He is. Brother Nathan... He deserves everything. He gave up everything for me. It's a bad shake. It's a bad deal. I told somebody, I was, bad thing, I told Brother Brad, I preach a message four times, five times after I preach it, and I preach it a lot better the next day. Yeah, yeah and uh, it, it just came up to me, you know, I don't, talking about the exchange Christ's blood for, for my sin and I said I don't even deserve hell for my past hell's too good for me and he said oh come on man and I said no <laughs> it's too good if we would think about that and think who God is and what he's done as the the, the ever-existing, everlasting, eternal God. Existing one, Lord God. Yahweh, man, would we ever give him all? Because he's the only awesome being. So we look tonight on, in, in some of the things that David's trying to, to shout to us. I mean, he's not, listen, he's not just giving a, a, a pep talk here. He's rejoicing. How? Look at the strings that we have up here. You know what I like seeing? When they get used. Right? Man, it's awesome. I mean, you know, when I first came here, I heard Dakota play. 
And I was blown. I didn't know a, a piano could play like that, uh, especially from a young little white guy like that. You know, not putting, you know what I'm saying. I mean, that looks like somebody that I've been playing for 60 years, just Liberace stuff, you know. And, and so it blew me away, but I'm like, that's only God. God's gifted that young man, you know, and then he sings. David's saying, listen, whatever's got strings, listen, when David got his hope back, when David got that joy back and he got his all back, listen, the first thing he says is what? Pick up your harp. You go do what you're supposed to do. Give God the all through the gift that he's given you. Listen, be fearful. Look, it can be gone in an instant. The arthritis will set. You won't be able to do it any longer. Find you something else. Give your voice, he says. Give praise unto him. Sing unto him a new song. You should have a new song in your heart. I tell Ty and I share a, a testimony. When I got saved, two weeks in, my baptism rolls around, and my best friend that helped me to church, that, that got me led there to hear the word, at my baptism, he gave me two CDs. And, and at this time, I was green. I didn't know anything other than old Catholic songs, you know, the Latin songs. And, and so I didn't know what to expect, but there's a song by Third Day, Born Again. That's my song. And that's the song in my heart. I can hear it today. Tears will well up and emotions in my heart because it brings me back to the day that I got set in the awe in the presence of God. Yeah. And it showed me the power of salvation to bring a dried up old wretched drunk up off the ground and heal him with spiritual healing and then give him a new body. But even though I'm ashamed of this one, he's given me a new lift. He's given me a facelift. Miss Kay. I didn't have to go to surgery. He just gave me a lift. Amen. Made me a new man. And guess what? I've got a new body. Brand R, new with hair coming i can be excited brother stephen i'm gonna i'm gonna whip that thing around you know it, it's been about 30 years but i'm telling you ty's got to look ty's got to but the new song is where i want to get you david is talking about when salvation redemption is nigh when god reaches back down and says i'm not done with you yet i've got this Trust me, repent, realize, recognize, and reconciliate with me. I've got this. The price has been paid, Miss Brenda, once and for all. I've given an avenue for you to go to, Zaylene. Look, his name is Jesus. You remember him? You remember the all you used to have for him? Regain it. And so there will be a new song. Ty got saved in the back seat of my red truck in the middle of a mini storage complex in Gulfport. We were moving. I think we were moving. Were we moving out of, from Parkinson? We were still here. Where we, we left here and we're going to Divine Grace. That's when I got called down there because I baptized him at Divine Grace. I look back in my window, and Born Again's playing. I had the CD, and every man, I got to hear it. So I get to getting in the awe, and tears are rolling down my eyes, and I look back, and I see Ty, who doesn't cry for anything, and the emotions are tearing up and eyes, and I said, boy, what's wrong with you? I don't have a song. So what you mean? I'm lost, Daddy. I'd opened a whole nother door. He said, and so I led him to the Lord right there in the parking lot. Showed him the, he said, why was it that song? It's not the song, son. The song is my, my chant that I've been saved. The song is how I feel in my heart. I've been born again. He said, Daddy, I want to be born again. He got saved in Gulfport in that many stores. I led him to the Lord. He said, Daddy, can I have that song? Yeah. <laughs> I said, son, you can have that song with me. We'll sing it together. Yeah. But there ought to be a new song in your heart when the Lord reaches down and touches you. 
And when he reads you and picks you back up, you ought to recognize that he is all-powerful. Look at my time. We can round this up. We're going. God's awesomeness reveals in his goodness of creation. That's where David's trying to lead us. Through all our song in our heart, he wants us to remind us. He said, David, you know, when they came along, he said, David, God is the awesome one. You're just a king, but the king of kings is coming. You are going to be a help to the king of kings, bringing him in. But you'll still call him Lord. Amen. And so David's reminding us and said, listen, rejoice, be happy that there is a king of kings and a lord of lords. There is a God almighty who sits in heaven, who holds the stars in suspension, who's given us the moon and the sun as light by night and light by the day, who decides when and where. He is us out of the dark. Up this morning. I can't preach to y'all if I don't ever listen. Outside this morning, before reading, Brother Brad, I got on that back porch and the moon was playing like a big Q-beam out. And it lit up. The, I turned the lights off to everything outside. And I just stayed out and took in the awe as I watched as the stars were suspended in all their glory. And the moon shining as bright as it was. And I said, you know what, God? You did this. You control this. Thank you, Lord, for giving me breath this morning. Because you control this. Amen. God has his plan in all of creation. One through six is like to tell us that God spoke the world into existence. Uh, He spoke it in the world. You understand that he didn't just put it all together and, and, and throw it here and there and have his hands directly on it. He spoke to existence. Six literal days. I can't, I can't wire a house in six days. You can't build, well, it may be a shack. We can build little ones. But it won't be finished. It was good. It, it was so finished, it was good. Right? And it says this, that it went from the, the morning to the evening. And then it was the next day. So that tells us it was a literal day, 24 hours. It was done, right? That's power in creation. The power in creation to breathe into the nostrils of a clay man, a man of dirt. He is that God to take clay and mold him and breathe life. And man became a living soul. But I wanted to show you one other thing. That was God, Jehovah then, right? But when it speaks of God now, this God is Elohim. He's the deity. He's the three in one. He's the incarnate. Listen, this is God. The plan was that Jesus, what we take for granted is Jesus has come into the scene. We were made in their image, but Colossians said we were made in his image. Whose image would that be? God in the flesh. We, we, where do you think we got this from? The incarnate. And what did he say he did to the seas? His spirit moved across the waters. Didn't that what say? So we've got a picture of all three moving through creation as God pulling together. How awesome. Y'all, ain't seem, y'all don't seem jacked up about this as I am. Let us make man in our, our image. That's a three little word. Three entities of God. Right? Oh, man, that's fired me up. Look, I even got in parentheses. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Can, can we give him some praise here? This, <laughs> oh, when I heard that little baby this weekend, we have a a God who does not let us forget how awesome he is, right? As a child coming from a womb, the Spirit of God enters in through what breath? The breath of life. Jesus said, I am that life. We have an awesome God to know it comes from fluid to spirit. And unfortunately, 
the mint, you've got sin that dwells in a curse. Right? Yeah. As, as great as these children and great as they come in, there's still sin upon this earth. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to end up just like the rest of us. We're going to sin. But that's where God shows us his greatness, his awesomeness, and his apparel that he's going to be there. He's always there giving us like a night. I said I used a night light. When we put a nightlight in our, in our child's room, don't be scared. Just call out, I'll be there. Huh? Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath, what? Praise the Lord. This morning, that moon shining, brother, I sat down, I hear the roosters crowing. I hear the geese crowing. I hear the wind and the whippoorwills and everything's made. You don't pay attention to that when you don't step aside and stand in awe of who God is. So I sat there and I'm listening. And it dawned on me, Brother Brad, the sun's about to show up. Right. Yeah. Woo! They're getting some practice in. Right. The sun's are coming. Praise ye the Lord. Right. As they're praising, I start thinking about that grand boy of mine. As he entered into the world. As what? <clears throat> I got there late. Uh -huh. And I get in the labor delivery. Nurse says, it's too late. I said, no, it ain't too late. I grabbed the door. Wah! Loudest little voice I've ever heard. <laughs> Let everything that hath breath. He came praise. into this world. Praise. We come in praising the Lord. Why? The spirit of the Lord is within us. At that time, God had breathed life into us. Amen. Right? Amen. There's an awesomeness about God. And if we won't praise Him and give Him the glory that He des rightly deserves, Jesus said this in Luke 19 and 40. He's answering the Pharisee. He that answered and said unto them, He said, I'll tell you that, that if these should hold their peace, the stone shall immediately cry out. If we will not speak and shout that praise and that hallelujah, and minister and, and, and share the gospel and just get excited for the Lord. He said, listen, I've got the rocks over here. I've got the trees over here. I've got the birds. But he said the stones. You ever heard a stone make a sound other than the rolling ones? Yeah. The rocks will shout. Praise you, the Lord. For you are awesome. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> if we'll stand in awe and rest, <clears throat> the rest of the inhabitants will and they will rejoice and give him praise. The rest of the inhabitants is all of creation. This morning I witnessed all of creation. Well, what, I, what was in my area, giving the Lord praise. His, his word will not return void. It's truth. His works are solid. They're righteous. Amen. Secondly, the God's awesomeness, it reveals his power and his word. By the word, we look at Psalm 33, 6, it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and then all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters and sea together in a heap, and he layeth up in the depth of storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord, and let all the inhabitants, everything in the earth, praise. His word is true. His word is righteous. The Lord bringeth, listen, he, he brings the counsel. Can I tell you that if we'll give our problems to the Lord, get out of the way and let him show up and show out instead of us trying to intermingle in his business? He'll show out, Kelton. He'll take your problem, the thing that's got you feared and fretted so much, and act like nothing ever happened. And then it throws you in this kind of dazed, set aside look. And what, what happened? The awe of God. It's the unexplainable. That's God. That's when I like showing up. Hey, I wake up in the morning. Brother Stephen, I can't imagine it. When I say I love you, my brother, because I haven't gone through it. But I'm here, 
for you and your family. The all of God will heal in time. And it's all right to grieve. That's right. And I can tell you something. We serve an awesome God. Amen, Whoo, and your boys there with him right now, shouting Amen. and praising. And I don't worry about him no more. He's with you, brother. He got you. He's an awesome God. <clears throat> we need to treat him like he's an awesome God. His words are power. Colossians 1 and 5 says, Who was in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created in the heaven and the earth, invisible and the invisible, whether they be thorns, dom thrones, dominions, principalities, powers of all things created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church and who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead and that, all, that in all things he might have preeminence. First place. First place. Why? He's up and over everything. Yes, sir. You picture the, the triangle of life. He's there. He's been there. He'll be there. And he's got this whole thing. When he tells you about a plummet, a bricklayer uses a plumb bob and he hangs it from the top, the sure point. And when it hits the bottom, it dictates that straight line. Gravity has no point but to point straight down. And you, I, we measure to that line, that straight line. And that's what we build to. That is the Word. The Word is the plummet in our life. It has power to change. It has power to save. Listen, I didn't get saved on my own. I didn't get saved by the preacher man. I didn't get saved by the church house or the pew. I got saved by the Word of God coming alive, telling me I was lost, dying, and going to hell. Amen. It told me specifically, you're unrighteous. Really? Yeah. Your righteousness is the filthy rags. And man, kind of set the light bulb off. I didn't get saved right away, but it planted the seed. And that seed kept every week, every week, every week, every week. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Right? For there's none righteous, no, not one. When I said that, I said, Tammy, you mean to tell me? I think I said, I think I got it figured out. She said, you do, huh? She probably said, it's about time. <clears throat> The Word of God is powerful. The Word of God is from the beginning. I read you that first Colossians for who is in the invisible God, who is in the beginning, who are we created after, was the Word. John 1 tells us what? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God, right? That Word is Christ. The Word is capital W-O-R-D. There's power in the Word. The Word came amongst us and lived amongst us and shared His life stories. And then He gave His life for sinners such as I. And then He was buried and dead. He got crucified, buried. He resurrected on the third day. His power in that Word came back to life. Why? That we might have hope. That we might have celebrate in the, the very fact that God loved us enough to send His very best, His Son, to shed His blood on a cross at Calvary for a sinner who deserved death, deserved hell, deserved the grave, but the Word had power over hell, death, and the grave. And now I know that my Savior is sitting there waiting on the marching orders. He's waiting to come back for us. Why? Because there's power. There's resurrection power. There's power to come back and redeem His bride. There's a, there's a marriage being set up, right? There's power in that word. We're going to be reconciled into one. Right. Whoo, what a day. Hallelujah. <clears throat> there's power in his word. There's power in his creation. <clears throat> yeah, I brought water up and ain't even using it. <clears throat> I swear that's water. I don't know, brother. <clears throat> you 
God's awesomeness is revealed through his love of creation, but is also his reconciliation of his creation. His plan was never to let it fail. God doesn't do things just haphazard. When he created all of this, all of us, there was a plan. Sin entered in, right? I believe it entered in by surprise. There was a redemptive plan all the way back from the beginning. It was worked out. Why it happened, when and exactly, that's not up to me to know. That's up to him to know. I can ask him one day. You want to know? Ask him one day. Make sure you'll be there. Amen. <clears throat> God's Word comes alive because God's Word is alive. God's Word has the power to deliver you from the bondages of sin. God's Word, what did he say in 14 6? Jesus said this. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. He said, I am the way. The truth, the word is the way. The word is the truth. The word is what mama life. That life lives within you. It's up to us whether or not we're going to let God's all shine. Let his awesomeness work through us. You see, we, we don't have to get in here and get pumped up. We ought, Look, a lot of us come in, a lot of churches today, you think they've got to, really, it's, the, it's up to the, I felt sorry, Brother Daryl, you know, he gave us our, his heart, right? He did. He laid it out here. And I said, you know, there's a lot of pressure on a music man. You know why? Because he feels that he's got to come in here and prime and prod and get us fired up when we ought to be bringing the all to him. He, all he is, listen, he's a director. Music. You know what he's helping us do? Lead us in the way that God, the songs that God's given him, all we've got to do is let the all shine out. Let our voices be heard and rejoice, as David sang. If we can play an instrument, get up here and play it. If you can get it, look, there's, what, 25 chairs up here. There's a 250 out here. Maybe more, sorry. Whatever it is, praise him. Rejoice in the fact that you have life. Your name is written down in the life book that there is an eternal God who loved you enough to save you, who redeemed you, who lifted you up when you were down, who has given you a chance in life. And all he's asking you to do is show gratitude and love back to him. That's it. God's words are powerful to raise the dead back to life. You believe that? Lazarus is laughing right now. Huh? What about that? I wrote down this, and this is where a lot of us see it. <clears throat> Jesus has the power in his word to forgive sins. And I know the Pharisees, when that palsy man sat there and Jesus knelt down over him and he was sitting there and he said, Son, thy sins have been forgiven. And they looked at, who can, for, who can say, man, only God can forgive sin. And Jesus, in all his power and humor, his son, get up, he said, your, sons have been forget, your sins have been forgiven, now get up and walk. Yep. Jesus also got the power to heal. That word has a power to do mighty things. I've sat at a, at a, at a deathbed with other preachers and took James 5, and I, we prayed over the sick. And in weeks' time, that man be better. There's power in the Word of God. We've got to learn to use it and praise Him for it. Amen? It's not in our timing. It's not in our will. It's in His will. Not my will, but Thy will be done, Father. For why you are the all. You know, it's interesting that in Yahweh, that all is sitting there present, ain't it? Brother Brad, I'm closing. We have got to get our awareness. Let our awe of God shine through us in everyday life, not just in here. The only way the world is going to see God